karibu sana. Let's bow down our heads as we pray. Our heavenly Father, King of Glory, we worship you this morning for this opportunity you have given to us to be able to learn from you once again. Thank you, Father, for the power in your word. Thank you for seeing us through the last quarter. Thank you for all the lessons we learned. Thank you, Father, for opening our eyes, O oh Lord, to every truth that we need to know. Thank you so much, O Lord, King of Glory, for this new quarter we are starting today. Thank you, Father, because this journey, Lord God, we are starting today, you will go with us, you will speak to us, you will teach us, you will correct us through your word, you will repair our life through your word, you will meet us at the point of our needs through your word. All this, O oh God, Father, we are expecting from you through the power behind the word. Father, we are here, O oh God, to learn, Father, teach us, O oh God. Give us an understanding heart. Give us, O oh God, the ability, O oh God, to put all these words into practice. Help us, O oh God, for this word, O oh God, to make an everlasting impact, O oh God, upon our lives. Lord, use your word, O oh God, today to do wonders, to do miracles, to change our life in the name of Jesus. We are here for you, O oh God. Take it from us, O oh Lord. The speaker and the hearer, we are all students before you, Father, teach us. Teach us, O oh Lord. We open our hearts, O oh God. Speak to us in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. So, once again, I want to welcome each and every one to the house of God. We are starting a new quarter today. And uh, we all know we finish uh, the last one on Sunday. And uh, this week is the beginning of another wonderful quarter. And this quarter will be running from September to November 2021. And the quarter still is Fundamental Doctrines of Christianity. Fundamental doctrines of Christianity. So we'll be wondering what is doctrine all about. That will be our theme for this quarter. And when we talk about uh, doctrine, doctrine simply means a belief. Doctrine simply means a belief or set of beliefs held and taught by a church. They are a belief derived from the Bible, from the Word of God, put together. It is a codification of beliefs or a body of teachings or instructions, taught principles or position. All this derived from the Word of God, put together. That's what we call doctrine. Doctrine is the foundation upon which our faith practice is based, how we live our lives. Doctrine teaches us how to think because how we think always determines how we act. If we do not think right, we cannot act right. So when we talk about doctrine, if it's, uh, those are the teachings, instructions, principles put together from the Bible and uh, set aside by the church. Okay, this is how we should do, this is how we should, should relate, you know, talk about how we live our life. So this uh, quarter we'll be talking about that. So all these lessons are designed to open our eyes of understanding to the fact that in our faith practice, there are fundamental doctrines that guide our behavior and work. Therefore, there is need for us to stay focused and abide by these doctrines so that we will not drift away from our faith in Christ. Obedient to these doctrines, 
will greatly assist our work with God. So this quarter, we'll be looking at those fundamental doctrines of Christianity. So I welcome everyone on board as we start this journey of 12 weeks that every one of us should be determined in our hearts that we will be available every Sunday so that we will not miss any part of the lesson. So today we will be taking lesson one and the general topic for today is divine inspiration of the Holy Bible. Divine inspiration of the Holy Bible. And the aim of today's lesson is to emphasize that all scripture is written by divine inspiration. All scriptures, all scripture is written by divine inspiration of God. And um, the topic for others says God's breath word. I think we, uh, Manuel is not ready. We have it on our WhatsApp. Can connect, please. The topic for others say God breath word. The topic for youth, the Bible, the true word of God, and intermediate the, the, the Bible, a gift from God. A gift from God. Our memory verse is taken from the book of uh, 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16. Let's read together as many that are there. 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16. Let's go. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Hmm. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable, number one, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So, we are going into the uh, lesson today. We are talking about the Word of God, the Bible. There are so many stories about all, how the Word was formed, how this video came to be, how that happened. So many stories, so many things. But... The Bible is the ultimate authority over everything, either living things or non-living things. It has the ultimate authority over everything. God is the creator of the universe. In the book of Genesis, we saw how God created the heavens, uh, the heaven, uh, the heavens and the hearts. And it described how he made everything in the book of Genesis. And later he made Adam and Eve. And why he did that was to have a fellowship with them. He desired this relationship with man. And at the cool of the day, in the Garden of Eden, God will come down to have this relationship with Adam and Eve. And after a while, the devil came in and destroyed this relationship. And God sent his son Jesus to bring humanity back to him. And since then we've been relating, and God also gave another thing through which we can have intimate relationship. And that thing is the Bible, his word. Is word the easiest form of communication between an immortal God and mortal man is the Bible. The easiest form of communication is the Bible. 
God can talk to us through his word, we can talk to God through his word. It's the easiest form of communication. The Bible helps man understand God and also how to build a relationship with him. The Bible is a specially scripted book by God to help build a relationship channel from him to man. So this, our Bible we carry is powerful. It's a way through which we can know God, we can build a relationship with God. So today, in our lesson, we want to learn more about the Bible, the Word of God. And today's lesson is divided into three parts. It's divided into three parts. The first part says, the Bible God divinely inspired the writer, the writer, the Bible. God divinely inspired the writer. Many people are saying because the Bible is written by men, that there's no way there will be no error, there's no way to not be corrupt, there's no way there will not be mistakes. But the people God used. They are not ordinary, they are human beings, but they did not write by their own wisdom. They did not write by their own uh, knowledge or what they know, but they were under the influence of God when they were writing. So today we want to learn more about those people that God used to write the Bible. And uh, we are reading from our Bibles, Second uh, Timothy, our memory verse, and the next verse. Second Timothy, chapter three. We are reading verses sixteen and uh, seventeen. All Scripture is. Is spread out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. And the second test is a uh, Second Peter chapter one verses twenty and twenty-one. Second Peter chapter one from verse twenty to twenty-one. Verse twenty. Knowing this first of all. That no prophecy or scripture come from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. That is the second Peter. Chapter 1, verse 20, uh, verses 20 and 21. From that place we read, we, we, uh, we are meant to know that those that wrote the Bible, though they were men, but they did not write according to their own interpretation or according to their own will, but they were under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And these are the people that walked on this planet, but they were God's earthly faithful servants. They are the people that God has walked with them and walked through them. God walked with them and walked through them. They are not just people that just walk around, you know, 
but they are God's faithful ones. So if anyone will tell you, uh, because the Bible was written by a man like ourselves that uh, is not authentic or is not genuine, let them read and see how powerful this word we are talking about is. Because the Bible was written in the space of 600 years by 40 authors and they were not all together at the same time. They were spaced with so many years. But if you put them together, look at the references, you will see that a word that came out in the Old Testament, find the reference in the New Testament. And these people did not live at the same time. And there are so many prophets, uh, prophecies that came so many years ago that have been fulfilled. Some have been fulfilled as we are living right now. And some will still be fulfilled later. So if it were to be the will of man or the understanding of man, how will a, a man know what is ahead? In life, you see things are changing. You see there are some uh, uh, communities, they will say this is our culture. You see cultures are changing. So many things are changing. But one thing that has never changed is the word of God. As it was in the time of old, so it is today. As it was relevant in the life of the, of the, of the apostles, in the time of the Holy Church, is still relevant. Is relevant. Come to think of it. Moses wrote the book of Genesis. Was it there when God was creating the universe? It was not. But it was under the power of the Holy Spirit. Under the inspiration, divine inspiration of God when he was writing it. God made him to see how he created the universe. And he was able to write it down. And he was able to write it down. The word of God was written by divine inspiration of God upon his faithful servants. When we get that right, when we know that, then we'll be able to accept this word. We'll be able to read it. We'll be able to understand and we'll be able to have the word, we'll be able to have impact into our life. But when we are doubting it, that is it not a, it's not a, it's not an ordinary book. So many authors will write, they will say this first edition. After writing, they will see mistakes, they will say, oh, reverse edition, or uh, this edition, because uh, this, because, and geography, they say uh, at first, they, they, that the, 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 the word is, it, so, some people even say, the, at first they said the word is flat. They started reading, reading, reading. They said, oh, it's round. Oh, later, oh, now it's, it's spherical. Yes. So things are changing day by day. But this world, have, though many people, have, many people, many philosophers, many, you know, educated people, they've come up to, to destroy this world. But the more they fight this book, the more is spreading. Why? Because the force behind it is so powerful. It's not an ordinary book. It is not an ordinary book. That is why we need to cherish this book. We need to own it. We need to, to read it. Because in it, there's word for us that can correct us, that can reprove us, that can instruct us, that can guide us in everything we are doing in life. The Bible, God divinely inspired the writer. God's hand was on the people that wrote the Bible. The Bible is a gift from God to man. They are gifts 
for our relationship. If you receive a letter from your husband, you will read it many times because you love him. If God is your God, is your father, is your husband, is everything to you, his letter to us is the Bible. We need to read it, we need to cherish it, we need to accept it and accept the authority of the word of God. Praise God. If anyone should ask you that why do you believe in the Bible, what will you tell the person? It's one of our fundamental <laughs> doctrines we are talking about. You know, so many people have been tossed here and there. They will ask questions. They won't be able to answer. I say, hey, I don't know. They say, but the Bible was written by men. People like you, and you are carrying it on your head. You tell them. It may be written by a man or men, but those men were under the inspiration, under the power of God through the Holy Spirit. So it's not an ordinary book we should joke with. Part 2 says, evidence of God's inspiration. Evidence of God's inspiration. We are going to read the book of Isaiah. Let's turn our Bible to the book of Isaiah. Chapter 40, verse 22. Verse 22 says, It is he who sits above the circle of the heart, and its inhabitants are like grasshopper, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to dwell in. That's Isaiah chapter. 40 verse 22. You know when these uh, scientists were saying, ah, the heart is flat, the heart is this. From the beginning, when the Bible was written, God said what he created was something. They said flat, they said this. God knew, the Bible confirmed that this is the shape. But they needed many research or researches to be able to come to this time. The Bible is the ultimate. If you want to know anything about this universe, search in the Bible. The Bible said the whole world was suspended. It was later the scientists found out that the, the, the universe actually was suspended. But while God was writing through the men, he had been written that the world was spread and was spared. From the beginning. Let's read 2 Samuel 22, 16. Second Samuel chapter twenty-two, verse sixteen. Then the channels of the water were seen; the foundations of the world were laid bare at the rebuke of the Lord, at the last blast of breath of His nostril, and the last uh, uh, test there is Act of Apostles. Eighteen twenty-eight. For he powerfully refuted the Jews in public, showing by the scriptures that the Christ was Jesus. So, uh, what we are bringing out from this second part is the evidence 
of God's inspiration. The Bible, as we said earlier, has been existing for 600, no, was written in the space of 600 years and has been existing for many years, from generation to generation. And for those that have been reading, they have been seeing the transformation power that is in the Bible. It's not a literature book. It's not a newspaper. It's a book that is full of power. It's a book that has power to do anything. No matter the kind of person that is reading it. It will not say because you are from this side, I will not work for you. Because you are black, I will not work for you. Or because you are white, I will not know as many, as many that will you know, accept this Bible, read it, the power behind it will be activated and it will work in the life of that person. This Bible we are talking about is relevant throughout ages. Our forefathers, they read through it. We are reading it. Generations to come, if Jesus tarries, they will still read. And it will also still be relevant. It's not outdated. It's not. You will wonder the, book, the Bible that has been written many years. Is still having, you know, the application is, is still having application in our life. It's still applying to us. It's still relevant to us. This can only be God. It can never be any man. It can only be God. And it's still meeting our needs. It's still meeting our needs. All human needs can be met through the word of God. Through the word of God. And the most important point that really prove that the Bible was written under the inspiration of God is this. How will you be reading a book and it will change your hearts? For those that are Bible lovers, there are some issues. Personally in my life, I decided to sit with the word of God and I saw changes. So if anyone should even come and tell me that the Bible is not true, for what I have experienced, Nobody can convince me otherwise. You will see someone that is very sick at the point of death and you say, just trust in this world. Believe God in this world. And you begin to recite those, you know, meditate on this world. You, you know, reset your mindset that no matter the state of my body, the word of God told me that I will live, I will not die. Oh God, I had the testimony of a woman from a, I was watching that program online and the minister gave that testimony. This woman was involved in a fatal accident. All her interesting came out. But she was still alive. And what this woman was saying, I shall live, I shall not die. I shall live, I shall not die. The woman was trusted in an hospital. It was on a Sunday. Doctor was in church. They called doctor, doctor came. Doctor said, oh, I'm so sorry. After like, how many hours before doctor could come? This woman was still saying, I shall live, I shall The doctor could not do anything. He was referred to another hospital. He, this woman finally got a doctor after eight hours. At that time, she could not talk again, but her lips was still shaking. She was taken to the theater immediately, and she was there for how many hours? They thought she was gone, but after another eight hours, she came back. She's alive today. Who is telling you that the Bible is a book that is written by man? 
Where is the power behind that word? It's the power of God. If you believe it, if you own it, it will work for you. It will change your life. It will transform your heart. It will change people's life. If you want someone, you know, I will not, oh, when I was going through this uh, message, this, this uh, lesson, I was just thinking, if we just introduce the Bible to people in the prison, don't punish them. Give them to study this word. They will come back pastors. We see many people that went to prison and they were given Bible because they had time to sit with this word. Their heart was transformed by the power behind the word of God, the Bible. So this Bible has the ability to change the hearts. That's one of the evidences, one of the evidences that the Bible is writ was written under God's inspiration. You see someone misbehaving, you preach the word of God to the person, and the person gives his life to Christ and begin to live by the word of God. And a criminal becoming a pastor. Have you not seen people like that? Yeah, there are many. They say, Today I surrender my life to Jesus. I'm now a Bible practitioner. And their life changed. You will wonder, you won't be able to, even to match their past life with their new life. You see a prostitute now becoming a woman of God. The power behind the world. That is one thing that we should know that this book is not an ordinary book. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, the Bible says, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitude of the heart. Is Quick and powerful. It is alive and active. That is the word of God. And it's like a sword with two edges. It can penetrate through our soul. It can touch our spirit. It can break our heart. It can transform our... It can, it can penetrate to any part of our lives. That's the word of God. This is evident from the fact that people from different lifestyles, cultures, and families feel the effect of the Bible and adapt their ways of life to it so that they can conform to the way of God and avoid the worldly desire of evil. So many countries drill their constitution from the word of God. They base it on the word of God because they know the efficacy of this book we are talking about. People from different places, from different cultural lifestyles accepted, adapted the way, the teaching of the Bible in order to live a life that glorifies God and not, never to be under the control of this worldly evil system. That's the power of the Bible. It can change any life. It can transform any body. Because it's not an ordinary book, there's a power of God following that word anytime it's spoken or anytime someone believes in it. There are two quotations here, one from John Cuisine Adams. He says, 
so great is my veneration of the Bible that the earlier my children begin to read, begin to read it, the more confident will be my hope that they will prove useful citizens of their country and respectable members of society. This man believed that if I if his children can begin to read it, that he respected the Bible so much that if his children can begin to read it early, they will become responsible people. He himself has read and he knew what he has done in his life before he could recommend that for his own children. How close are we to the word of God we are talking about? Has he ever touched us in any way? Has he ever transformed any part of our life? Have we felt the power behind it? And another quotation is from Abraham Lincoln. He said, in regard to this great book, I have but to say, it is the best gift God has given to man. All the good Savior gave to the world was communicated through this book. But for it, we could not know right from wrong. All things must desirable for man's welfare here and after and hereafter. So to be found portrayed in it. This one he was telling us that everything Jesus came to work, came to this world to do was communicated to us through this world. Even our welfare here on earth and in every we are going, everything. If you want to know anything, just sit with the word of God. If sit with the word of God. He said the entrance of the word. Give it light. Anything you don't understand, anything that is covered, anything that is in darkness, that is very, you know, you can't get. Read. They will shine light into it. And we give understanding to every simple one person that will read it. There's power. How many of us believe that there's power in the word of God, the Bible? That it's not an ordinary book. Yes. So we want to look at the last part. The last part now is telling us, say, believe, behave, and become the inspired world. Believe, behave, and become the inspired world. We are reading Psalm 119. Psalm 119 from verse 9 to 11. Psalm 119 from verse 7 sorry from verse 9 to 11 it says how can a young man keep his way pure by guiding it according to your word with my whole heart, I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. Let's read uh, the King James Version of that place. This, the place I read, uh, the version I read is English Standard Version. Let's read New King Version. New King James Version said from verse 9. He said, How can a young man cleanse his way by taking him according to your word? With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word has hid in my heart that I will not sin against you. So, that, the, the, the other version said, Your word has stored. So, the antidote 
against sin is the word of God. Your word have I hidden in my heart so that I will not sin against you. Your word have I stored in my heart that will not sin against you. No wonder a man of God wrote in the Bible that he gave to his new convert as a gift. This book will keep you from sin. This book will keep you from sin. And sin will keep you from this book. So if you don't read your Bible, you are inviting sins into your life. But if you want to run away from sin, make the Bible your partner. So, the Bible we are talking about is a full package. And it has so many benefits that we can derive from it. It will help us to grow in our faith. If you are reading it, it will transform our life. It will rebuke us. It will warn us. It will correct us. It will give us instruction. It will do so many things. So, it's a book we need to cherish. It's a book we need to share. As Christians, encounter the world, these three things are expected to happen. So, if you have the world, number one thing, believe. As Christians, there is a need to daily renew our mind by the word of God. The word became more potent in our lives when we truly believe it. Believe. Is it possible for someone to read the Bible without believing? Are we together? Yeah, is it possible? You wake up in the morning, you carry your Bible, you are reading. Is it possible to be reading without believing? I have to ask two, two there. You say yes, you say no. Is it possible? It's possible to read. How? Thank you, sir. You know, some people read the Bible like a newspaper. And some people are even reading so that if anyone should ask, have you read your Bible today? Yes, I've read. It's not that they are reading to to understand or they know why they are reading. We read the Bible to understand what God wants us to understand, to know. This is a message from God to us. He sent it to us for a purpose, to do certain things in our lives. It's not just for us to have it in our house, so that if anyone should come in and we see Bible on the table, we know this is a Christian home. No, it's a message that is sent to us. But this message that is sent to us through the Bible can only be effected in our life, can only be realized in our life. When we read it, we understand it, we believe it. The testimony of that woman that I, I uh, uh, narrated the other time. If that woman had been reading, I will live another. I shall not die, I shall live. If you have just been reading, you should have just been reading without believing it. You know, there's a difference between reading and meditating. Like a man gave an illustration. If you if, if someone is having a uh, having a head uh, having headache and you take uh, maybe parastamol or whatever and you hold it, you believe it can work. Everybody believes parastamol will work for headache. But will it work if you did not take it? Are we together? Yeah, if you have it and you are saying, I know it will work. I know it will be removed headache. But you refuse to take it in. When you just read without meditating, you just believe it will work. But when you inject it into your system, you sit down with it. What is this word saying? Is it for me? Will it, will it, is it actually meeting? How, how will this affect my life? 
How is it talking to me? What area is it talking? To? You think about this word of God over and over again, and we have a space in our heart by increasing our faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. By the time you are ruminating, you are meditating. Your faith in that word will increase. That's why when you see people meditating and they go to a point, they just scream, wow. They got it. The word has gotten a place in their heart. They have gotten that point that the rema is released. Not only the logo, you just read. But when you get to the power behind the word, the word of God, it's all the word in the Bible, they carry power. But until you are able to go deep, it's just like gold. Gold is found on it. If you are just doing, you know, working on the surface, you will get stones, different kinds of stones, different colors. But if you want gold, you need to dig deep. So if you want to get that, you need to go deep. Go beyond reading. Believe in this word of God. No man can see God except through faith. Our faith can only grow through the word. As we believe God's word, our life becomes transformed by the word. Our life becomes transformed by the word. I've seen so many people that are very, very tough. Very, very tough. But when they met God, when they gave their life to Jesus, and they began to read the word of God, you see they become the most gentle. Very, very gentle. The power of the word of God. The power. It can transform. It can heal. It can deliver. It can restore. It can do so many things. So if we are reading the word of God, we must make sure we believe in it. Believe is number one. Number two is behave. Daily meditation in the word form new habits in us. These habits became, become godly character. These habits become godly character. The power of the world is not only in illuminating, but to transform us. Everyone that has a genuine encounter with the world always has a transformed life. As you read, you believe. As you begin to meditate, you begin to reset our mind. You begin to reset our mind. You begin to delete all those stuff that we have stored in our memory and the word of God begins to fill our memory. Begin with, with the day by day, day by day, we are reading it, we are reading it. It's the water, it will be flushing out. Whatever, you know, we have gathered when we were growing, our beliefs, our cultural beliefs, our deeds, our environmental stuff that we have put in our mind, it will begin to renew our mind. You will begin to see things in another perspective. People, some people believe you cannot make it in life if you don't steal. But by the time you begin to seek in the world of God, you know that God is the one that has given us strength to make wealth. And he's interested in our prosperity. And if he knows we need money to do his work, he will definitely make it available. He will begin to renew our mind. The way we think, the way we see things, our perspectives, our way of life, our lifestyle, everything will be transformed. By the time we begin to behave, it will not become an habit. You will say, ah, it's like this person has changed you. It's the power behind the word of God. The last one is the inspired word. The inspired word. This is a direct communication by God Himself through the Holy Spirit. This communication channel can only be attained by continuous fellowship with the Word of God. God's ultimate interest is to have a direct relationship with all men 
as we continuously meditate on the word of God, his spirit gives more understanding to us. We started from the Garden of Eden, why God created Adam and Eve? Because he needed a relationship. And when the relationship was not going on, he sent his only begotten son Jesus and he gave us the Holy Bible. Now we communicate with God through this world. And the more we begin to read the word, we meditate, we believe, we begin to change our behavior. We, the more our behaviors are changed, the more our ways of life are being transformed to Christ likeness, then we begin to have closer and closer relationship with God. And our fellowship with God will become sweet every day. Every day, our relationship with God will become better, become sweeter, become bigger. As we meditate on the Word day by day, day by day, Holy Spirit will continue to give us understanding. Because you, you, you desire to know. Because you are interested in the world. Not that you read today, the next one month you don't touch it. It can't work with those people. But when you show interest, you want to know. I remember when I gave my life to Jesus Christ, I joined this church in the year 1993, April 18th, Easter Sunday. And I gave my life on that day officially. Pray with people of God. I remember the Sunday school I joined like this. After that quarter, I met them at the middle. The following quarter, as we are starting today, I started with them. At the end of that quarter, I desire, I said, ah, I need this word. I read the 12 memory verses on my head. That book. The following quarter, the last quarter and that one, 24, I read it. The third one, I read it. By the time the last quarter now, I've already and you know, I've joined the workforce. I say this one is for students. Because I was just the more the, where I was coming for, I the church I was going, I was not I was I, I was not given a Bible. It's only the man there, the in front, that uh, that read the Bible. I I can't even I've made okay in school. Then we are doing the uh, Christian uh, religious this thing. But Bible, have the Bible. So now when I get to a place when they are teaching me about God, I can have access to the Almighty God. Oh, I grabbed it with the whole of my heart. When we show interest, it will open our understanding. It will help us. It will help us to understand and it will transform our life. And our life will get better. And when people will see us, ah, is it now this that prostitute that was moving around using her life, you know, anyhow? But now she's a woman of God. Is it not a criminal stealing everywhere? But now he's a pastor. The power behind the word of God. It can change any life. It can transform any life. So is there any issue in your life? As a believer, go back to the world. If there is anything disturbing your mind, you need answer to some situation, go back to the word of God. Uh, in conclusion, I want to encourage every one of us as we start this quarter to pay attention to the word of God. Let's love this word of God. The Bible is the word of God that was divinely given to men. The spirit of God is the source of the inspiration that helps the writers of the Bible to document all that God instructed them to write. The thought, process, and documentation of the Bible was given by the Holy Spirit of God. The documentation of the Bible is error-free, and there was no omission in it. The Word of God is living, as we can see it transforming lives after centuries of its documentation. The potency of the world has not diminished, rather it increases as daily, it's increasing every day. 
the prophecy of the Bible are fulfilled. The prophecy has been fulfilled day by day. So, that is the word of God for us. Let's bow down our heads this morning and begin to talk to God. Let's begin to talk to God and say, Lord, I receive your word today. I desire to read. I desire to meditate. I desire to live my life through the word of God. I receive the transformation power in us. I receive the power behind the world. I receive understanding as I continue this quarter. Lord, touch my life through your world. Transform my life through your world. Make my life better. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen.